faithful friends who are dear to us, gather near to us. Morning, Toad. Morning, Finn. You planning on fishing today? Well, I'm, I'm thinking the weather's cleared up enough to sail to Halifax. I've got to get the island's mail, and this could be my one chance in December. It was quite a storm that blew through here last night. All kinds of flotsam and jetsam settled on the beach this morning. Find anything interesting, did you, Toad? Me? No, uh, no nothing to mention. Nothing at all. <laughs> here. Mama said you'd want the outgoing mail. Throw it in, Tater. Uh, that reminds me, I need to check your, with your mother about something before I head out. Ahoy, mateys! The sea is hinting at her secrets again. Secrets? What do you mean, Toad? The nor'eastern that just blew through here churned up the waters to reveal secrets that she's been hiding. Treasures that she may have been hiding for years. Treasure? I went down to the beach as dawn was breaking. Tide was rolling in. And there it was, just waiting for me. For us, <laughs> really. <laughs> what was it? Stuart's sitting on it. I'm sitting on treasure. You found this? What's inside? Arr, I have no idea what's inside. I keep me tools up in the shop here. I very well couldn't leave them down on the beach, so, so I dragged it up here myself. Imagine that. Imagine all the gold. Yes, and imagine what else we can find at low tide. 
So you think there could be more? Ha! I always think there could be more. That's what keeps me going back each day. I think once you kids have done school for the day, we should both, all of us, head down to the beach and, and see what else we can find at low tide. Dress warm, mateys! A real live treasure hunt. Treasure! Arr! 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 <coughs> That's two pails of salt pork, a sack of split peas, rice, brown sugar, and navy beans, one casket of molasses, and four cases of tea. Got the list here in my pocket. Consider it bought. Oh, I'm trying to find something nice for the kids' Christmas stockings. I've sewn up new pea coats, and I'm working on knitting caps and mittens to match. <laughs> It'll be a lovely Christmas for them. And now, what would my wife like? Why don't you come with me just once and see Halifax for yourself? What, and leave Amethyst Island after the storm that just blew through here? I think I'll keep my feet on solid ground, thank you very much. Ah, but the weather, it's past. Smooth sailing today. And where would you find room for me in that big boat of yours? And who would mind the inn? I've got an entire island full of people to feed, not to mention Tater and Stuart to watch. Well, well, maybe next time we'll arrange for Sarah to help you out a little. I would just love for you to see the markets there. They would dazzle you. My life is here, and here I'll stay, Finn. And I must go. I'll be back tomorrow evening with all your supplies and the island's mail. Bye, kids. Goodbye, Father. Bye. Goodbye, Katie. Off with you, then. May the wind always be at your back. Just wish me luck, dear. That's all I need. You know I don't believe in luck. Godspeed, Finn. Let's get your lunch pail and you two can head off to school for the day. After school, would it be okay if me and Stuart went for a walk down to the shore? Whatever for? Well, it's just that with the storm, we've been so cooped up. I thought maybe the fresh air and exercise would be nice. Exercise, hey. Hmm. Well, all right. But if you do go, make sure you're home in time for dinner and keep your eyes on your brother the entire time. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'll grab the lunch pail for you. There you go. Thank you. Bye-bye. Christmas time, consider well and bear in mind what our good God for us has done in sending His beloved Son. With humble hearts we all should pray to God with love this Christmas day in Bethlehem.
Hello, Katie. Oh, good morning, Sarah. So Finn will be home tomorrow evening? Mm -hmm. He'll bring me Island's mail, some fresh supplies, and a little bit of Christmas shopping. <laughs> All I need is the mail, a fresh bit of news from family could be the best Christmas gift I could imagine. Well, I suppose from your view up at the lighthouse, you'll know first when Finn's arriving. True. He'll barely be docked by the time Nelson's down here to pick up any mail for us. My sister out west, and she's in a family way, and I'm just anxious to know that things are settled and as they should be. You know, it's funny. It's my husband who brings the island's mail, and yet I've never received a single letter myself. Everybody I know lives on the island. Everybody you know loves you. Not many can say that. Many know me, Sarah. The entire island knows you, Katie. You're one of us. Well, I couldn't imagine any place feeling more like home. Oh, I love to tell this story. I remember my father coming home and saying a skip had washed ashore and inside a baby girl. A week went by, wreckage washed up, and no one to claim you. It's a miracle you survived. I God kept. God kept you safe for a reason. I believe you're right, completely. His plan included you being here. Yeah. He brought me to the only parents I could ever remember, and <laughs> they always said that I was their little miracle, an answer to prayer, <laughs> bless them both. Maybe God brought me so that they could have the family they always wanted. <laughs> Maybe there's more to it. I don't know. What I do know is that God brought me here on purpose, like you said, and this island is where I'll stay. You couldn't get me on a boat if you were Noah himself and the floodwaters were swirling around my knees. <laughs> I don't doubt your faith or your gratitude, but could it possibly be fear and not purpose that keeps you here? I don't know, Sarah. I really don't. I don't even know that it is fear. Well, as long as you don't feel trapped, Amethyst Island can be a fortress. I'm happy. Never doubt that. Oh, before I forget, here are those cranberry preserves I promised you. Oh, perfect. They are Stuart's favorite. I thought you <laughs> told me that once. And Sarah, you know you are welcome to stop by any time. Preserves or not. <laughs> I do know that. It's a nice day, isn't it? It's oh, your yeah. turn to carry the last one there's rotten squid. First one has to eat it. Bye. Hello, Mother. Hi, Mrs. Nelson. Hello, Mother. Hi, Mrs. Nelson. Hi, Stuart. How was school today? Miss Emily wants to have a special evening class later this week so we can study the night sky. What a wonderful idea. Yeah. She wants
wants to talk to you about everyone gathering here to begin. Brilliant idea. We should have it Christmas Eve, and we can invite all the families and make a real party out of it. But she said we'll need to have a clear sky for it. And if it's cloudy? So we should have a Christmas Eve gathering, clear sky or not. Have her come by after school tomorrow if she can. I'll ask. Can we go for our walk now? It's a lovely afternoon for it. Enjoy. Thanks, Mom. Here's the pail. Thank you. Mom, where might I find our shovels? Shovels? It's December. You can't be clam digging. The ground is frozen. I know, but Toad said... Stuart, we're just going for a walk. Well, I'll see you home for dinner. <laughs> Did you want to step in for a cup of tea? That would be lovely. See you, kids. Bye. Look at those preserves. Mm. Now, let's get Toad. Arr! There's no need to get me. I am one step ahead of ya. Do you think we'll find anything, Toad? The more we look, the better our chances. But we won't find anything just standing around here. Any sign of Finn yet? You mean your letter. It's just not my letter, Nelson. For the sake of Katie and those two little ones, I would just like to know that Finn will be returning safely. Well, I see something. Wait a minute. Well, I can't tell. Well, is it a boat? I think it's his boat, but, well, it's so tiny. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, it must be his boat. Go get the mail. I will. It, but it's just... Oh, never mind. I'll hurry down here. Put this away for me. Of course. I'd say this makes up for not finding anything yesterday. Arr! Tides turn, wind changes direction. You can never give up. Never give up. I'm surprised Mom let us go two days in a row. She hardly lets us out of her sight when Dad's away. Well, maybe she needed you out of her sight. What? Well, I know she's your mom, but she has her secrets, too. Mom doesn't have secrets. She might. It is almost Christmas. Oh, right. Come on. I don't want anyone knowing what's up. Put your backs into it. Mom's gonna come looking for us soon. Who do you think I'm worried about? Are we almost there yet? If you say that one more time... I know, I know, you'll make me walk the plank. Or worse, a kihalia. What's that? Quit asking so many questions, Stuart. Come on, we're almost there. Right here, this is a good place. Well, we can't just leave it like this. We'll cover it with this. 
when do we get to open all the treasure? Well, I'd be willing to wait till we had more time. Is that absolutely necessary? Well, I guess no one's around. Go fetch me, me crowbar. Where do we look? Hmm. Well, I think it's behind my tool bench. Then again, maybe not. Ah, just think of it as another treasure hunt. Arr, booty. my friend. Here, no time to waste. I'll help you uh, unload the boat and then we'll sort through the mail together. Never mind the mail. There's more pressing news right here. There could be more. Oh, who's that? Blimey! I don't know. Dad, who's this? We don't know. Go in the house and get your mother some blankets now. Where'd you find them? It's on the way back from, from Halifax and found them floating on some barrels that have been lashed together. Amazing! He's got to get warmed up. He must have been shipwrecked on, on that storm that blew through here. Barrels? Did you get the barrels? What barrels? Well, surely you could have put the barrels in the boat to me. Or lashed them together and dragged them behind the boat. You didn't just leave them out there, did you? A life's been saved and you're asking about barrels? Well, could have been valuables in there. Jewels. Gold. Rum. Treasures unknown. What's his name? He hasn't said a word yet. How would I know his name? Let's call him Jonah. He does look like something spit out the belly of a whale. Stuart said you needed me? Oh dear lord, what's this? I found him out in the water. What? Inside, now. We'll have him warmed and fed immediately. I named him Jonah. Jonah, I like it. We don't know what else may be wrong with it. Well, he hasn't spoken a word. Tongue's probably frozen. Inside, now. Can we keep him? I promise I'll help take care of him. Make yourself useful and get the rest of the things from the boat. The Murphys are making quite the catch today. Huh? Well, today we found that crate washed up on shore. And Dad found a man in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, we're pretty lucky. I don't know. I don't think luck has anything to do with it.
start somewhere else. Arr! Morning, Toad. <laughs> Morning, Mrs. Murphy. Uh, Stuart seems to think this belongs to you. Oh, that does look like mine. Uh, how's your visitor doing? Well, he's quiet as a church mouse, but he's eaten and his color's better. Curious thing, isn't it? Very. Oh, so you don't know uh, uh, where he's from just yet, I guess? No idea. I don't think he even knows. <laughs> Imagine. I suppose he'll remember when he's ready. But until then, I'll just keep Tater and Stuart from pestering him too much. Oh, please send the kids on over to my place, Mrs. Murphy. We have a grand time together. Thanks, Toad. Uh, I expect my son won't be returning home with any more of your um, destructive tools. Hmm? What an odd thing to say, Mrs. Murphy. Odd indeed. <laughs> Me promised the kids we'd open it together. A pirate's word is as good as his bond. He's probably still asleep. I suppose you think your blueberry muffins will bring him around and that they'll be able to unravel the mystery of who he is. I didn't say they would. I just need to get a good look at him myself. Between him and waiting another day for that letter, I hardly got any sleep last night. Well, then you could have looked after the lighthouse and I could have slept. What, and do your job too? Of course, Lars Nelson. And by the way, did you remember to notify Halifax about the stranger? Of course it's protocol to notify them of a maritime rescue. Well, here we are. Ladies first. Hello, Ben. Hello. Uh, Sarah's in, or Katie's in the kitchen, feeding the kids their breakfast. Okay, thank you. Well, I notified Halifax about our Jonah, and I imagine they're going to notify me shortly about what ship went down, but I think it's probably going to be months before we really know who Jonah is. I suspect he must have been on a ship that got too close to Sable Island. Yes, this is the graveyard of the Atlantic, that's true. Well, he's looking a lot better today. His colors returned. He was so blue when I found him. Poor sod. Well, I had to think. He's the lucky one. You believe in luck? Well, why else did he survive? Random chance. Sometimes cruel, sometimes wonderful, but always unpredictable. Well, I don't hold much stock in luck. I'll agree with you that uh, things are unpredictable, but uh, that the Lord sometimes weaves our life stories into... Uh, so that we know exactly what's going to happen and, and it's going to help us. And you know what? It's going to end up that it's in sort of a different picture, but you know, it's his perfect design comes out of this whole thing. He's a perfect design for it. We'll try and lives. tell poor Jonah that. Jonah spoke. But he did? Well, what did he say? We're not exactly sure. Mrs. Nelson went in to check on him, and he mumbled something. Well, if somebody's going to drag conversation out of somebody, my wife can do it, I'm telling you that. Yes, you know, if there's news to get, she won't leave until she's got it. Well, I'd love to hear the guy speak, but I'm already headed out for the day. Have a good voyage. See you later. Bye, Dad. <laughs> Poor Jonah. She's probably got half his life story out of him by now. <laughs>
you're sure you want to be outside. There you go. And you're warm enough? And you really want to sit in view of all of this water after what you've just been through? Yes. Uh, I do love this view myself. Couldn't imagine anything prettier. Mm -hmm. The island is such a wonderful place to live. I mean, the kids can keep themselves busy for days with their adventures here. And there's uh, the Nelsons, they run the lighthouse, and uh, I think he was bringing you in yesterday. All the beloved fishermen, Martin and Ramsey, and our neighbor Toad, who runs the salvage shop, uh, he was there yesterday as well. Oh, the island is full of so many lovely people that make it the perfect home. Home. I'm sorry. Do you remember anything yet about your own home? No. I'm sure it will come. You know what? It's amazing you're doing as well as you are. <laughs> You'll remember everything when you're ready. <laughs> it's your turn to carry the lunch pail. No. Uh -uh. Yeah. Uh -uh. No. Uh -uh. Yeah. Uh -uh. Children. Uh -uh. Yeah. Yes. No. Uh -uh. School's done for the day. <laughs> you're outside. I am. You speak English. I do. Hello. Oh, Miss Emily. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Miss Emily, this is, uh, well, this is Jonah. <laughs> Jonah, this is <laughs> Miss Emily, <laughs> the Hi. island school teacher. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you. The children have told me all about you. Nice to meet you. Please sit down. Did the uh, kids tell you about my plan for the Christmas Eve party here with all the families? Tater did. I'd feel terrible, though, if the sky was cloudy and we couldn't do the lesson. So we skip the lesson and jump right into the party. Okay. Oh, that's enough cold air for Jonah. <laughs> Why don't we uh, step inside to the warm kitchen? Can I help you up at all? No, I'm, I'm fine, thank okay. you. And I can tell you all of my plans for the party, but don't worry, I will take care of everything. <laughs> I'll just plan the astronomy lesson then. Uh, uh, astronomy? Uh, I love astronomy. You do? Yes, I, at least I think I do. <laughs> isn't, isn't that odd? Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose so. <laughs> He walks, he talks, and he loves astronomy. Tater? Yes, yeah, Stuart? What's astronomy? It's like learning about the stars, and the planets, and all that stuff. Arr! Tis the coast clear! Toad? Are you alone? Yep, it's just us. Meeties. I believe we have some unfinished business to attend to. Which one first? I call the crate. The crate it is. Teacher, you keep an eye out for villagers. Pillagers? Uh, yeah, same thing. What does treasure look like? We are about to find out. <clears throat> of cetaceans, amphibian metamorphosis, mammalian adaptations, complete catalog of arthropods, I'd like to get here a little bit early, uh, right after dinner on Thursday, uh, before any of the other children arrive. Well, why not join us for supper then? We'd love to have you if you'd come. Well, be no trouble. <laughs> no trouble at all. I will take care of everything, and you just plan the astronomy lesson. That'd be lovely, thank you. I'll see you then. <laughs> Bye, Miss Emily. Something wrong with your eye, Toad? No, why? It's all patched over. 
I just thought maybe you'd injured oh, it, so. It, it is a patch. Uh, I scratched my eye, and, well, I'm just giving it a chance to heal up. So, did Jonah happen to remember anything else other than the astronomy thing? No, he was very quiet. He just learned to talk today. Incredible. He remembered how this morning. It's not like he just learned from scratch. Poor man. I once read about something like this. People who endure a terrible shock can find themselves with no recollection of what happened to them. It's just the mind's way of protecting a person until they're ready to face it. Well, I suppose Jonah's experiencing that very thing. I've never heard of this before. But it was a book I read at the university in Halifax. Reading a book can open new worlds, can't it, Miss Emily? Why, uh, yes, Tater. How nice to hear a student of mine appreciating the written word. Books is treasure, Miss Emily. Well, I suppose they are, Stuart. Well, I have to get going. I'll see you two at school tomorrow. Toad. Miss Emily. Bye, Miss Emily. Ow! What was that for? Scullywags! Don't you go be spouting about our treasure now. I thought you didn't even care about the books. It's not like we told Mrs. Nelson we found treasure on the beach. Everybody knows them. Pirates call mates. Not a word to anyone. Got it? Got it. Not one word to anyone. Hello, dear. Don't suppose your mom's got some of her famous chowder cooking? It wouldn't be our kitchen if there wasn't any chowder on the stove, sir. Good. Toad, I haven't seen you out in your boat lately. Hmm. I suppose you haven't. Is that an eye patch? Uh, yes, uh, it is a patch. Uh, that's why you haven't seen me out in my boat. I scratched me eye and, well, I'm just giving it a chance to heal up. Uh, with the only one good eye, I, I tend to just Sail in circles! Pointless to take the boat out. Circles, you see? Yes, yes, circles. <coughs> Very frustrating. Aye. That, that would be. Shall we eat? Aye, I'm starved. See you around. Enjoy your dinner. Thank you. said a word, Toad. Not one word. Arr, you can talk, little guy, but you just can't talk about the treasure. Oh. Can we open the trunk now? Sure. Stuart, get the blanket. Tater, keep an eye out. Aye, aye, sir. Speaking of eyes, did you really scratch your eye, Toad? No. I just wanted to try the patch out. I wanted to see if it, well, if it made me feel more like a pirate. Is it working? No, not really. <laughs> I think I got it. <clears throat> it's somebody's stuff. It's our stuff now. Look at this. Treasure maps. A compass. Ooh, a chronometer. And this is a nice one, too. A cro what What's that you said? A chronometer. It's for seafaring navigators to measure longitude so they don't get lost out there. So you won't sail in circles anymore? I don't really sail in circles. I just said that. Why? Well, I can't be telling the people the real reason why I'm not out in my boat every day. I can't say I'm scouring our beaches for, for lost treasure. Everybody know our secret then, Stuart. Oh. Look at these. These are fine clothes. They're dandy. They don't look like anything made around here. Nope. I'm a guessing they came from London Town, I am. Fancy. I'll say. The ladies will be turning their heads when old Toad comes around. Uh-oh, Dad's back. Quick, hide the booty. I'm out of here. See you, mateys. Hi, Dad. 
And how are my little Murphys? Good, Dad. And how's Jonah? He learned to talk, Dad. Sentences and everything. He remembered that he likes astronomy. Really? He said that? He did. Well, as I have to see and hear for myself. Let's go in. Christmas has come early to Toad, it has. <laughs> Arr! A barrel just thrown itself on the beach for me. No one's going to know about this one. No one. Miss Sam 
Emily could teach you all kinds of stuff. I told you I'm not ready. I, I need more time. Besides, I, I wouldn't fit in those little desks. But you learned to talk in one day. I bet you could read by noon. I'm sure I do read. How would you know that? I just do. Besides, your mum would have a fit if she saw me walking halfway across the island just to get to the schoolhouse. That's true enough. But you will come with us for the astronomy lesson, right? Yes, I, I think she'll allow that. I, uh, I'd love to hear it. All right, then. We'll see you after school. Bye, Jonah. Later. Tater. <laughs>
Well, I figured if you're set on looking at the water, you might as well have something warm in you. Thank you. <laughs> it's mesmerizing, isn't it? Oh, there's just so much of it. There's, there's a whole world that exists under the surface, whether we're aware of it or not. The fish, you mean? Well, yes, the, the, the fish and, and the, the whelks and the periwinkles and the limpkins and anemones and corals. So many beautifully designed creatures. All types of animals, really. They withstand tons of seawater rushing in wave after wave. They're so delicate looking. You'd, you'd think that they'd be crushed by the pressure, or smashed against the rocks, but somehow they continue to survive. Little miracles, really, every one. How do you know all of this? I, I don't know how I know it. I, I just do. You can tell me all of these things, and yet you can't even tell me your name? Not if my life depended on it. Well, let's look at what we do know. You are a miracle. You were designed to survive. What's happened to you? How else could you be here? A miracle. Everybody always said I was a miracle, brought to this island by God. I don't know why I'm here, really. I, it's, it's actually quite frustrating sometimes. Jonah, do you think that a God who would so carefully design all of these tiny creatures to thrive in the sea would carelessly forget about you? He's got a plan for you, for each of us. I, I want to believe in a God who has all the answers. I, I'm trying to have faith that he brought me here. I, I guess I just need to simply believe. Hang on to that truth, Jonah. I'm clinging to it. I, without it, I'm a lost man. You've never left his grip. I'm longing to be your 
Finn. Oh, hello, Sarah. You know, you don't always have to bring food by when you visit. Oh, I just wanted to drop off a little something for the Christmas party you're putting on tonight. Well, you could have just brought it by this evening, you know. Yeah, but this way I can get a chance to chat with Katie with less people around. Well, don't let me stop you from your mission then. Say hello to my wife for Will me. Will do. Good day, Finn. Good day. Hello, Ramsey. Martin. Let me get the door for you there. Hello, Finn. Hello. Say, did you two boys leave any of Katie's Irish stew for me? Aye, sadly we did. Not for lack of trying, though. <laughs> you are Jonah. He's becoming quite the talker he is. Aye, he was telling us about the migration patterns of whales. He was going on about the Sourbees whale. They're quite something, really. I know. This morning at breakfast was a lecture on pileated woodpeckers. Oh, I'm glad we got to hear about the whales instead. I, I never cared for the woodpeckers. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that can put holes in wood makes me very nervous. All right. Good day, gentlemen. See you See later. You. Martin. Hey. What, what did he call them? A mesoplodin. Mesoplodin something. For oh, the whales. Aye. Mesoplodin biddens, methinks. Yeah, aye. That's it. Yeah. So, Finn, good day fishing? Couldn't find him. Ah, so then it was a good day for the fish. <laughs> Suppose it was. How about you? How's your day going? Well, I'm getting by. You know, some fishermen were just telling me, you know all about uh, whales. I seem to. I, I just get so excited when my mind latches onto a fact that I'm sure of. I, I have to say it out loud. I keep hoping a memory of something personal will spill out. Can't imagine how frustrated you must be. You know, Finn, as, as puzzling as this is, I'm, I'm trying not to get that frustrated. But your life's been stolen. No, my, my life has been saved. But you don't know who you are. Well, somehow I, I know enough. Well, well, what do you know? Well, I, I know that everything happens as it should. I, I know that God has a plan for everything. But how could a, a man who doesn't even know his own name be so sure of that? You see, Finn, a, a man without a purpose is like... Well, it, it's like a ship without a rudder. Well, where do you find your purpose? Well, we're, we're all miracles, really. I, I'm in his hands. What better purpose is there? You sound like Katie. But why would a god leave a, an orphan shipwreck like she was to grow up on an island like this, too afraid to ever step foot in a boat again? I, I know a lot of things don't make sense, Finn. Do you, do you think I understand why I don't remember who I am? I'm not saying I have all the answers. I just, I just trust in a God who does. We all make our choices, Finn. I, I suppose I just choose to have faith. And I suppose I have to make my choice. Absolutely. We all make choices. and The God I know wouldn't 
have it any other way.
The, uh, Murphy children begged me to attend your lesson. I have a feeling you might be a bit bored. Oh, I, I doubt that, Miss Emily. <laughs> Looks like a perfect night to study the stars. It does, Tater. It's awfully cold out here. Why can't we do this in June, Miss Emily? I plan to. The planet tilts very different from December to June. I think it's important to observe the difference in the night sky. In June, we can study the Atlantic right whales that come up here for the summer. They feed much closer to shore than most whales and aren't scared of people. Of course, this makes them quite vulnerable. That's, uh, that's absolutely right, Tater. Did you teach her that, Jonah? No, I, I don't think I did. No, you didn't. I read about it. You read about it in what book? Uh, books. Yeah, where is everybody? Shouldn't the class be here by now? I think I hear them coming. Hi, Leah. Good evening. Hi, Kathy. Good evening. It's nice to see you. Hi, Good evening. Hi, Good evening, Hello, boys. Emily. Hello. Hello, Miss Emily. <laughs> Look at Evie. All right, let's take a seat. I know it's cold, so we'll try to cover the basics quickly. Everyone who lives on an island should know a little history about how astronomy and life at sea are intertwined. We can't have you growing up here not knowing how early sailors managed to find their way around. Usually they tried to stay close to shore, navigating with landmarks, but this wasn't always possible. When they did have to venture out of sight of land, they would determine their latitude by observing the sun by day or the north star by night. Can anybody spot the north star for me? Yes, Polly, do you see it? Very good. This would help them determine how far north or south they had sailed. It was even said that experienced mariners used major constellations to plot their course. So now, can anybody tell me what they think stars are made of? Yes, Stuart, do you know what stars are made of? I think stars are teeny tiny bits of sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's a pretty good answer, Stuart. The sun is a star just like all the ones we see in the sky right now. The sun is just much closer. They're formed with dust and gas, mostly hydrogen gas. Now, before we head into Murphy's, does anybody have any more questions for me? If stars are just dust and gas, how could a star lead the wise men to baby Jesus? Well, I never really thought about it before. But I think that if God can create a star that can guide ships at night, why not a star that would lead wise men to Bethlehem? Anything else? I wonder as I wander out under the sky how oh, Jesus the Savior did come for to die for poor only people like you Then what does everybody say to some of Mrs. Murphy's hot chocolate? Yeah! <laughs> 
Come on in. It's all ready for you. <laughs> Everybody in. <laughs> That's a very good question. Tater, do you want to go grab Toad? He really should join us for this. Yes, ma'am. Um, Tater, I was wondering about this book you said you were reading. Yes, Miss Emily? It sounds like something I might like to borrow. I could really use some new teaching material. There's tons of them, Miss Emily. Tons? You have a lot of these books wherever from. Uh... Way to go, Stuart. Tater, why wouldn't you want me to know that you have a lot of books? Well, I promise not to say anything. Promised who? Pirate's Code. We can't say anything to anyone. Pirate's Code? For Pete's sake, Stuart, why didn't you just say it was Toad? <laughs> How did you know? Why wouldn't Toad want people knowing that you have a lot of books? Oh, uh, well, I guess they're his. Toad's? I didn't even know the man could read. <laughs> I'm not sure he can, Miss Emily. He let me take some of them. I was reading the one about whales last night. I should talk to him about letting the school use the books. No! He'll kill Hollis. It's supposed to be a secret. That makes no sense. Why wouldn't a man who can't read not want to share his books? I don't know, Miss Emily. All right, I'll take you to them. Right now? Yeah, they're right up here. Give me a hand, Stuart. Ornithology guidebook? How on earth can you read that? It's too dark. I, I, I didn't read it. I, I know this book and, and this one and, and this one. I've read them all. These are yours? Tater, pirate's code or no pirate's code, it doesn't matter anymore. Where did Toad get this? It just washed up after the storm. The same storm that scuttled Jonah's ship? Yeah. My, my, my journal, it, this is my journal, I, I, I make my notes in here. Are you all right, Jonah? My name, it, my name is James, it, it's James. Let's get you inside. Take it slow. Let's get you back to the Murphys. Of, of course, it's, I'm James Quincy, Oxford. Oxford University, I I'm remembering. Kids, close this up, get towed, and get home. I'm going to take Jonah, I mean, James, back. I, I, I live in Oxford. Uh, easy, don't overdo it. Of, of, of course, at Oxford University, I, I, I work at the Museum of Natural History there. I, of course, of this, course. This isn't taking it slow. Come on now, let's get you back inside. Toad's going to be furious. We don't have a choice. Let's just get this over with. Nelson? Remembered to to notify Halifax about Jonah. I mean uh, James, didn't you? Yes, I notified them. Oh, Nelson, it's a shame you had to mind the li the lighthouse. You should have been there. It was it was overwhelming for poor James. Can you imagine remembering a lifetime of memories just like that? No, he goes from flotsam and jetsam to being a highfalutin university bloke. He's been reading books and traveling the world for as long as he can remember. He said he was too busy to ever get married. Can you imagine being that busy? That's I do this. suppose it's a comfort to know that no wife and family have been waiting for him. Can you imagine not having anyone to miss you when you're gone? No. I feel sorry for the man, I really do. Nelson, are you okay? You've hardly said a word the whole way here. I'm fine. Oh, and, and here we are. Merry Christmas. Where are you fellas off to? Merry Christmas, Sarah. Uh, 
So we're just taking us boys up to his place for a few minutes. We'll be right back. Oh, you're gonna come in with me? Hey, well, I would just like to see what the fellas are up to. Okay, have fun then. Phew. Thanks. So, what are we up to? Well, Katie says I can't come for Christmas dinner until I return Jonah's stuff. Uh, it's, um, James, actually. <laughs> My name, it's, it's James. Close enough. Oh, quit sulking about it, Toad. You know it's the right thing to do? Whatever. Katie's cooking. It's the best on the island. Fine. I said I would do it, didn't I? I don't have to be happy about it. So you just happened to find James's stuff? I... No. I just didn't happen to find it. I work at it each day. I mean, I'm down on the beach searching and dragging and pulling and digging. I mean, it just doesn't happen. Fine. His stuff must have come onto the beach during the storm. I found it there when I was down searching. So you're saying the current that brought James into Finn's path is the same current that brought the wreckage to our island. You know, it makes sense. Yeah. We should have been looking for stuff all along. I was looking for stuff all along. I said we. Well, here they are. But you never thought you'd see these again. I'd actually had forgotten that I'd seen them in the first place. <laughs> but uh, I remember them now. They're just the two? You uh, didn't happen to find anything else recently? Who, me? Uh, yes, you. No, no, just the two of them. Just the two of them, that's all I found. <laughs> just these two crates. <laughs> that's it. Well, let's move them. Let me help you. Oh, oh, this is heavy. Oh. Wait, wait, stop. Katie doesn't want this smelly thing inside. <laughs> Keep it. It's yours anyway. I mean, you know, the thing is, it wasn't your stuff, so you have to give it back. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers. So don't cry. I mean, if, even if you are a loser, don't cry. I'm not crying. That's quite the neighbor you have there. <laughs> oh, he's all right. He's not quite right in the head, but, uh, you know, his, his heart's in the right place deep down. I mean, really deep. Uh, I'm, I'm not judging. I, I know what it's like to be not quite right in the head. <laughs> well, but you've got it all figured out now. You know, it seems to me that, that a man of your education, well, he wouldn't really need God or even be able to believe in that sort of thing. Finn, let me, let me tell you something. I've, I've studied cell biology entomology, botany, zoology, and on and on. But the more I learn, the more I'm convinced. Science can teach us, but it, it can't explain everything. Creation is too amazing. It's, it's too well orchestrated to be anything but a miracle. But you forgot all that. You forgot even your own name. Well, I forgot what was in my head, but I still felt what was in my heart. But how could you be so sure? Well, sometimes I doubted. I, I felt fear, even anger, but God never abandoned me. I believe that he loves me, and he created me to love him. It's all part of his perfect plan, really. What plan? His plan to save you, Finn. He's throwing you a lifeline. You just have to take it. Katie's been saying the same thing as long as I've known her. I guess I just wasn't sure I needed saving. Well, we all do. None of us are perfect. We've all sinned. Jesus led the only sin-free life and allowed himself to be the perfect sacrifice. He paid the price to make things right with God. When he, when he died on that cross, Finn, he was your substitute. 
he's never given up on you. But what does he want with me? A relationship? How, Jean? It's simple, really. Just tell him. Just tell him? God, I've never been the kind of man that thought he needed help. I guess I just figured that a, that a man ought to be able to pull himself up by his own bootstraps. But I guess you know that already. From what I hear, you know all about me. I guess what I'm trying to say is, well, I want to know you too. I want to know you like, like James and Katie do. I want to believe that it's all in your hands. And I want to have faith. I hope that you'll see fit to rescue me. thought I knew what was best for me Never needed anyone Always trying to turn my back on you Living life on the road Now I've come to realize I can make it without you. Rescue me, Lord, I'm falling. I've been trying to handle life on my own. Rescue me. someone new when I said those simple words I felt his love so near and he rescued me when I was falling I was trying to handle life on my own then he Rescue me, oh, when I was calling. Now I know that I can't make it on my own. No, I'll never have to make it on my own. Rescue me.
His grace and set me free. Amen. You mean it? It's that simple? It's that simple. Well, I've, I've got to go tell Katie. actually going to get back on a boat tomorrow? Well, I did promise the museum that I'd study the horses on Sable Island. They wanted to know how they've adapted after being isolated for so long. Last year, I, I actually got to go to the Galapagos Islands to uh, do my research. That's so far away. It, it was, but I think I might be ready to stay in Oxford. For the first time in my life, I, I think I might be convinced to take a job at the museum where I actually work. You promise to write, no matter where you end up? I will always let the Murphy family know where I am and what I'm up to. I look forward to those letters already. Um, 
Miss Emily. I... Yes? Well, I'd, I'd actually like to write to you too, if I might. Really? Uh, absolutely, and, well, I'd, I'd like to leave my books here at the schoolhouse for the children. Are you sure? Yes, I, I think I've pretty much memorized them by now. You mean I'll be able to read them any time I want to? That's the point. What a generous gift, James. <laughs> yeah, books is treasure. Thanks. You're welcome. Speaking of treasure, Toad seemed to cheer up a bit after dinner, after returning your things. I, I know. I, I, I almost felt guilty about getting my own things back. Guilty? About taking your own books back from a man who can't read. Well, no need for that anyway. He was practically giddy about something by the time he left last night. Probably planning his next treasure hunt. Oh my. Toad! Toad, are you all right? Kaboom! <laughs> what happened? The barrel! It was mine, Finn! Mine! What barrel? You weren't going to get that one! That barrel was mine! Okay, it was your barrel. There could have been anything in there! Jewels! Rum! Anything! Are you, are you sure you were all right? Gunpowder! Kaboom!